The Olympic Stadium in Munich, scene of West Germany's triumph in the 1974 World Cup. And tonight, England are here to take on the world champions. It's a side that shows the return of Pearson. He comes in because Everton's Bob Latchford had no real chance of being fit because of an abdominal muscle strain. It's a side that includes Kevin Keegan playing his first match of the year having been suspended after being sent off in a match on the 31st of December. That's the West German lineup. Five survivors of their triumph in the 1974 World Cup. The fifth, a late choice, Bert Holzenbein, who's come in because Klaus Fischer has gone down with influenza. Officials tonight come from Austria. The German bench with Jupp Derwell, who will take over from Helmut Schoen, at the far left with the silver hair. He played against England in 1954 in a 3-1 defeat. West Germany in white shirts and the black shorts. England in their chain strip of red shirts and white shorts. West German goalkeeper Sepp Meyer winning his 80th cap tonight. Interesting to see whether there's a tactical change in the, in the German side in the absence of Klaus Fischer, whether Holzenbein will really play up front or whether he's going to try and draw Dave Watson. At the moment he's playing well forward and being watched by Watson. Ball was looking for a Bramtrick of Schalke. Mick Mills in in place of Cherry, who's playing in the, the League Cup tonight. Trevor Brookings. had to clear an awful lot of snow from the terraces and you can see the remains of the snow around the edges of the ground. Wilkins. Stevie Koppel. German throw. Zimmerman. Referred to Dietz in the left-back position. Dietz has had the job for a couple of years now. A bad clearance out of defence. Almost gave a chance to Peter Barnes. The German captain, Bertie Vogt. Barnes. Getting good applause from the crowd. And the Germans looking incredibly nervous. A mistake there by Schwarzenbeck, who's playing at the back as the spare man. Germans still haven't really replaced Franz Beckenbauer. The man who was thought to have the job, Manny Kaltz, is on the substitutes bench tonight. It's Kevin Keegan. Brooking. And England showing all the early running. Butch Wilkins looking in fine fettle at the start. Topple. Pearson and Keegan down the middle. Barnes flicking it away well. But Schwarzenbeck steering. a bit too high then by Wilkins. Herbert Neumann. Four players left of him. Now everybody left of him on his own side. Well picked up. The nasty curling one. England now with just two forwards. Pearson and Barnes. A good break by Phil Neal. Book. Bonhoff. Well taken by Mills. Wilkins. Watson. Watson and Hughes pushing forward in this attack. Here's Keegan. 
foul by Bono. Take one of their best field, midfield players, the Marker Kings and players. A bit reminiscent of the 66 World Cup final when uh, Franz Beckenbauer spent the whole match trying to mark Bobby Charlton. Brooking with a free kick. Whereby Holtz and Bayern only to Hughes. Keegan. Topple. Neil. England back players pushing well up into the space ahead of them. Nicely done by Keegan. Schwarzenbeck could come across, covered by Bonhoff. Fifteen minutes gone, no score, with England playing very confidently. Here's Abramchik. Two England defenders. The tackle came from Bill. Neil. Topple. Neumann. Play. So I thought the benefit from the presence of a club colleague, certainly the feeling of Gunter Netzer, to whom I was talking last night. Holds them behind there very deep. Four Germans in the box. Mills. Bunn. Again showing good determination. And he's got a fair bit of space here. Taking on Schwarzenbeck. Could well skin him for base too. Good stuff from Peter Bunn. In the end, perhaps the final ball, not the greatest, but uh, a good run by him. And prepared to take on Schwarzenbeck. 25 minutes gone, no score. Neumann, good first time ball to Abramchik, hit it on the half volley then, Neumann. Free kick given against Hughes. One off to take it. Ruminiga hit the crossbar, or hit the woodwork somewhere, exactly where I wouldn't like to say. But he really thumped that. From the free kick, it got a crossing in the fence. Watson didn't quite make it. Came from behind, held slightly by uh, Neumann, and then it hit the post. And then again with just two forward. I'd say I'd like to see Keegan push forward a bit more than he is. Here's Mills. Barnes, again eluding the challenge of Bertie Vogt, crossing early. Louis to Neumann. Again finding his man. Settled well to his first internationals, Herbert Neumann. Louis. Lovely ball by Louis to Ruminiga. Abramchik moving into the box. Neumann is there as well. There's Abramchik. Here's McMills. Barnes. Proving quite a problem for Betty Vokes. Vokes winning out there. Keegan. A rather wild challenge by folks. England with four players just inside the 18 yard area. It's Buns. Again, doing well. And they got a man over. But it went into the side netting. 
was Pearson who got away. Lovely play here by Barnes. Pulled with one foot, crossed with the other. Pearson came in, side netting. Trio in the midfield. Keegan now in the centre forward position. Neil making an extra man. Timed his run well too. Topple to help. Three still in the box. Pearson. And it's in. Really nice build up that by England. Pearson, the scorer. Neil, who made the extra man, found Topple, Topple who crossed, and Pearson way up above the big fellow Rusman into the corner. Bonoff. Bonoff, whose contribution has been entirely defensive in this first half. Surely cost the German something, but no praise can be too high for the England performance. They're playing like a team who have tremendous confidence in their own ability and how good that is to see. Leading by a goal to nothing at half-time, the scorer Stuart Pearson in the 41st minute. Well, this packed crowd in this magnificent stadium here in Munich welcome the England team back with cheers and the German team with whistles. Certainly... Our performance in the last 48 hours has increased the standing of uh, English football by some amount. There's a feeling on the continent that we were dead and buried, but we've shown both in the B International yesterday and in the first half of this match today that we still have something to say in uh, football terms. England certainly looking at their best in that first half when they adopted a fully offensive policy. First free kick for the foul by Keegan. Schwarzenbeck not looking entirely happy in this new role of Libero. Acting as a spare man at the back of the defence. In the West German World Cup winning side, he was the stopper or centre half with Beckenbauer playing without a man to mark. Covering behind and instigating attacks forward. He was the back man for England then. Keegan, one off back away some 10 or 15 yards. He's trying to bon off again. The Bavarian crowd, not the kindest in the world giving little encouragement to their side and prepared to criticize at every opportunity. Here's Abramczyk. Brusman. Burke Muller. Zimmermann. Turned out to be a pass in the end. Keegan back in defense. Showing no signs of having been out of football for two months importance to the side emphasized by his selection in spite of fears about match fitness no foul says the referee this is Abramczyk Bergsmuller in the middle Rummenigge there Neumann there as well Wilkins head up Bartenbeck Foul by Wilkins, obstructing him, I suspect. The referee at the moment has his arm down, suggesting that he felt that the England player charges uh, opponent off the ball. It's going to be a direct kick. Bonhoff is going to take it quite capable of Bender. Shipped instead. Oh, they got three men in on two, but couldn't make it count. It's Bergsmuller. Over the four-man wall. Three come in on two. Bergsmuller is the nearest, but couldn't make the touch. Keegan in the inside left position. Wilkins coming from behind. Yeah. 
That's looking for Keegan. Oh, that's nice, but a good save. But a lovely attack by England. Keegan, who'd done a lot of running, was fouled well by Wilkins. A little flick, just didn't have enough pace to take it past Meyer. Wilkins. Just cut out by Ruminiger. Offside given against Keegan. It was close. Four players up with him. That was Neumann. They are being watched by Wolfgang Overath, former Cologne and uh, German midfield player. Had a well wide there. Form's goal last night was a reward for persistence, even if it was slightly unlucky against Phil Thompson, the ball getting stuck in the snow. Here's Ruminiga. And Neil forcing him away. The Germans making an awful meal of trying to set up a chance. Muddling each other. Ruminiga wide. Really not the sort of form you'd expect of world champions. They were all over the place trying to build a chance, muddling each other. And Rumenigo had the initial chance finally wide. Watson. Barnes has been quiet for a spell. Keegan on the edge of the six yard box. Here's Koppel. This is Wilkins. Blocked by Bonhoff. Wilkins thought with the hand. The referee said no. Dietz right in the uh, forefront of attack. The ball with Rusman. Is Baum. I think that's his first touch. Baum again with a shooting chance. And he makes it! I don't think Ray Clemens will be too happy about that. The form scores against England on consecutive nights. Against the B and now against the A. Pass Ray Clemens. Left hand. Seemed to go underneath the wrist. So Vaughan, the hero of the hour for West Germany, looking at it from behind the goal. The angle didn't look good for the striker, it was across the face of the keeper. Inside far post. 1-1. One, one. Five minutes left. And the free kick has been given against Watson. And the yellow card has been given against Wilkins. Bonner off again, the taker of the kick. Five men in the wall. Pearson just on the edge of it. Referee insistent on the 10 yards, which Pearson certainly isn't. Bonhoff takes it and shells it in the corner. And the referee, surrounded by England players, and the Germans congratulate each other. But the England players obviously feeling that the kick was being taken while he was still organizing the wall. But the referee gets out of the way, and Bonhoff curls it round the wall into the corner behind the unsighted goalkeeper. So Rainer Bonhoff has been almost entirely a defender. Curls this one round. Seventh behind the wall. Never had a smell of it. Came off Mills, I think. Neil. Zimmerman. Abramchik. Bergsmuller in the area. Well, he struck that well.
round the outside of Mills for the shot. Under a minute left. It will make it West Germany four wins since the 66 World Cup. And of course, Singler won 4-2. Brooking. To Neil. To corner. Deets doing the shouting. Peter Barnes has come across to take a left-footed in swinger. Brooking on the edge of the six-yard box. Meyer way off his line. Got it very luckily. Mills had to stretch for that. Sold a little bit short by Hughes. We now find seventh comfortably. Ball was caught there by Brian Greenoff, the more observant of you may have noticed. Here's Barnes. Koppel. Just backed away by Ball. Goal turned the game. Struck it well, certainly. Final whistle blown by the Austrian referee. But more to encourage England in defeat than West Germany in victory. The world champions struggled for an awful long time. And England were well worth their lead, which they finally conceded in the 79th minute when Vorm shot with some power across the face of the goal and passed Ray Clements' left hand. And then Rainer Bonhoff gave the world champions their victory from a free kick curled around a wall, which I'm sure the England players will still feel was being organized by the referee at that point. But as I said, more encouragement from England. They will obviously be disappointed at losing so late in the game. But they have shown, as the B team showed last night, that there are encouraging signs for English football.